Welcome to chapter eight. After this is over, you'll be two thirds of the way through. Aren't you happy? Chapter eight's all about climate. You know, relationships have a climate just like outside has a climate. Some days are warm and sunny. Some days are stormy and gloomy. <clears throat> but how do you deal with a changing climate in a relationship? Well, from chapter one, we talked about satisfying relationships. Satisfying relationships are based on survival, safety, esteem, and belonging. You know, <clears throat> if you're in a satisfying relationship, you feel safe. You feel um, desired. You feel that you belong. And there's a lot of cultural influence that, that creates these, these climates. Um, I've been all over the world. And different cultures treat people differently. And different cultures expect different things in a relationship. Uh, even in the United States, it's changed over time. I had an aunt that uh, who passed away years ago. She was in her 80s. And her husband would beat her. Uh, but, you know, back then, 100 plus years ago, um, it was, you know, the, the, the man could do that. And... The woman really didn't have much of a choice. I'm glad to see those things have changed. Uh, but cultural influence is a long, a, a very big thing on, on the culture, on the climate of a relationship. Um, Self-disclosure. I hate these um, generic explanations that are West and East and that type of stuff. But um, as far as self-disclosure goes, uh, in the West, where we are, uh, it's expected. In the East, it, it's not. Um, you have to be careful about self-disclosure, and that's one thing I, I've tried to express in your um, discussions that we have. You know, disclose what you want to, um, but be aware that everybody will not respect, unfortunately, your privacy. And so sometimes what you disclose to someone, whether it be in this group or, or in life, uh, they don't respect that and they share it with other people. You are going to have to invest in a relationship and often investments are non-returnable. You know, you, you invest, you self-disclose, you give this information out and um, whoever you're disclosing it to doesn't return the investment into the relationship. Commitment is, is, is a decision. It's not a feeling. You know, I, you all grew up probably with those fairy tales. They, they met, they fell in love, and they lived happily ever after. Um, it doesn't work like that. Relationships require work. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, when you fall in love, all the problems don't disappear. Uh, they might momentarily. Um, I told my children it's called lust, not love. Uh, but... At some point in time, the problems are going to arise, and a relationship requires work. Uh, trust. You must trust whoever you're in a relationship with. You're reliable, are they? This I talk about often in my group class, when, when people volunteer to, to be the presenter, or volunteer to do the writing, or volunteer to do the, um, the PowerPoints. You know, are they reliable? You know, are, are they are they going to come through with what they said they would come through with? You know, and, and using self-disclosure, you can build trust. But you always need to remember that it should be reciprocal. If you're in an interpersonal relationship with somebody and they know everything about you and you know nothing about them, then you aren't really in a relationship. You're in a one-sided situation where they have the power because you have self-disclosed. And we have different dialects in, in a relationship. You know, dialect is, is, is opposing factors. And so one of them is autonomy and connection. You know, a lot of times we want to be left alone. We want our privacy. And other times we want connection. And, you know, my wife and I have been married 38 years. Um, and there's a lot of times, a lot of her life, that I still don't know about because I respect her autonomy. And there's some things in my life she doesn't know about <clears throat> and she respects mine. But there's a lot of times that, that we want that connection to share those things. 
and and you have to find a way to, to be comfortable with the different dialects in, in a relationship. Uh, novelty versus predictability. Um, every relationship, you have those things that are predictable. You know, you can predict this about whoever you're in a relationship with because, you know, we're creatures of habit. We, we do things all the time. But every now and then, you know, the, the novelty, the spontaneity of something is something that, that makes it wonderful. Um, I used to bring my wife flowers all the time when I lived in Germany for a couple of reasons. One, the flower shop was on the way home. And two, they were cheap. I could get a dozen roses for like $1.50. And I didn't make a lot of money back then. But when we got back to the States, I quit buying flowers, you know. And, and the predictability was that I was going to come home with flowers. And when I didn't, she was like, what's wrong? And I said, nothing's wrong. I, I just, we can't afford it, and there's no flower shop on the way home. You know, so I tried to, to become novel after that and find different ways to express my appreciation for her other than bringing a, a flower home. Openness versus closeness. You know, um, how open are you with, with your respective partner? Can you discuss all kinds of things, or are you real closed about some things? Negotiate, you have to negotiate the shared journey. You know, this is, this, this um, I, I tell a lot of people a lot of times that life is a journey, and it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. You know, how did you get there? Uh, you have to negotiate a shared journey. If there are two different people and you're coming from two different places, you have to find a way to negotiate to where you both get um, what you want out of the journey. And, and a lot of times, it's, you, you don't get what you want. Uh, some relationships fail because the partners refuse to negotiate. You know, this is what I'm going to do, and if you don't like it, tough. Uh, that's not a, that's not a, a shared journey. Shared journey is where you both get stuff out of it that you want. Um, we could have confirming and disconfirming climates. You know, um, are you supportive of your partner? Is your partner supportive of you? Uh, or are they not? You know, I, I got my PhD and I probably couldn't have done it if my wife had not been uh, confirming. You can do this, you know. If she'd have been, well, you know, I don't know why you're doing that because it's never going to do you any good and you could da 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 it, it would ruin the, the support. It would ruin the relationship. Um, communication climates fall along a continuum. You know, it's um, a lot of times I'm real supportive of my wife. Other times I'm, yeah, if you want to do it, do it. You know, um, we have to deal with that, that, that continuum all the time. Whoever you're in a relationship with may support this decision 100%. But on the other hand, they may not. You know, my mom never worked after she got married. And my dad wanted her to stay home and take care of the kids. Uh, mom really wasn't positive or negative about it. You know, she said, you know, I can, I can do that and this and the other. And, and, it, it was a continuum, you know. He didn't support her working. She was okay with that, so, so they worked it out. But, you know, we all need to have confirmation. <clears throat> if, if I hadn't had people believing in me, I would have never got my PhD. You know, here I was, a, an old guy, legally blind, trying to pursue something that many young people have a problem getting. But I managed because I had that confirmation that I needed. I needed the support from my family and it gave it to me. You know, most relationships vary. I'm sure you all heard the fairy tale when you were growing up that a marriage is 50-50. Uh, that's bull. Okay, I've told my kids that's wrong. In, in, in the long run, you know, it should work out as 50-50. But there's a whole bunch of days <clears throat> it's 99 and 1 and a whole bunch of days it's 1 and 99. But to make a relationship work, you have to both be willing to, to um, vary your support. Some days it's all about my wife. Some days it's all about me. 
and we've managed that over time it it's about 50 50 um but you can't expect it to be 50 50 every day all the time you know we we need to uh we need to recognize our our partners in a relationship you know, it say hello you know silence is is often you know I've heard silence is bliss, but oftentimes silence is deafening. You know, when you say something and whoever you're in a relationship with ignores you, it affects the relationship. And especially, <clears throat> excuse me, nowadays, when we have all the social media that we have, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to it. But um, we need to have confirmation, recognize their existence. You say something every now and then that, that lets them know. Acknowledge their feelings and thoughts. You know, do, if you don't acknowledge their feelings and thoughts, you give them the perspective of they don't matter. If your feelings and thoughts aren't acknowledged, you have the feelings that you don't matter. And, and you need to acknowledge the feelings and thoughts of your partner in a relationship. Uh, you need to endorse and accept their feelings. You know, when my wife's father passed away, <clears throat> I had no clue what it was like to lose a parent. You know, but I knew it, it hurt her. And so, you know, I, I had to, to be empathetic and I had to endorse and, and acknowledge her feelings I had to endorse it and accept it. You know, this is this is something that, that hurt her very badly, although I don't understand it, and I did not understand it until my father passed away 20 years later, what she was going through. So you, you have to uh, endorse and uh, accept those feelings. You know, I might do something that that bothers my wife. You know, one thing that I learned early in the relationship was the toilet paper roll. You know, I put it on the roll. I didn't care how it went on there. But no, there was a right way and a wrong way to do it. And the right way was for the, the, the loose piece to come over the top, not come down the back. And it didn't matter to me, but it mattered to her. And so I had to endorse that and accept her feelings that this is the way it should be if I wanted to continue our relationship. I mean, something as small as that can make a big difference. Um, evaluation and description. You know, when she tells me how she's feeling, do I evaluate it and get defensive or, or do I use description and, and being open to try to understand her perspective? Uh, certainty um, is closed-minded. I'm certain about this, you know, and we see that a lot in our political atmosphere right now. You know, I'm closed by this is the way it is. You know, I'm this and in description, when you use communication in a descriptive manner, you're open. You know, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, I don't agree with you, but let me, let me hear what you have to say and, and describe, use description to, to try to unlock what their feelings are, as opposed to being closed-minded about them. Um, strategy. <laughs> a lot of people use strategy in relationships. Well, that's manipulation. You know, if I do this and do this and do this, I'm going to get that. Uh, that's that's not a good good healthy relationship. You know, spontaneity, being open and honest about things instead of of being strategic about them is a much better way for people in a relationship to communicate. Um, control. You know, I mentioned earlier I had an uncle that would, would beat his wife. You know, It was overt manipulation. It was control. I'm the man of the house, and this is the way we're going to do it, whether you like it or not. And, and you know, back in that day, she had no options. You know, she could leave him, but where was she going to go? She couldn't get a job. She had children to worry about and take care of. You know, so it was control over manipulation, which is, a, is, is not good for a relationship. 
problem orientation and finding an agreeable solution, that's the best thing you can do in a relationship. You know, um, a lot of times somebody has to make a decision. And when that happens, you have to deal with it. But it shouldn't be all the time, and it shouldn't be because I'm the man, we're going to do it my way. Um, neutrality. You know, a lot of people are neutral about stuff. They seem detached. Yeah, if you want to, go ahead. You know, and, and it causes conflict in the relationship because, you know, no, I really want to know what you think. You know, my, my wife married a soldier, and she knew that, that the Army came first, and she came second. And so a lot of times, it was whatever the Army said, I went and did. And she was okay with that. She was neutral about it. But she seemed detached. When I got out of the Army, and I said, okay, this is what I want to do. Well, if you want to, I'll support you. As it wasn't what I wanted to hear. You know, I didn't want to hear this neutrality, just detached person, you know, you know, I wanted to hear somebody that was empathetic, you know, and, and confirm my worth. And, and it was real hard at first when I wanted to go back to school and wanted to get my Ph.D. and all. A lot of times she was, she was like, well, if that's what you want to do, you know, I'll support you. And, and great, you know, I want the support, but no, really, what do you think? You know, can't you, what do you believe? I, I need to know more than neutrality, you know, whatever you want to do. Um... Some people have a superiority complex in a relationship. You know, I'm better. No, in a relationship, you're equal. If you can't get to that point, then you're not really in a relationship. And in workplaces, you know, in, in work, there, there's some people that have this feeling, I'm the boss. Okay, fine, you're the boss, but, you know, if, if this is a group then, then or a team, then, then I have to have some, some say. Have, have, you know, what have you seen in different workplaces you've been in? Is the, is the leader in the, in the, in the workplace um, the empathetic? Do, do they care about what you think about? Or are they strictly, no, you know, my way or no way? Um, social media. Social media is something that is infiltrating our lives if it hasn't already infiltrated yours. Uh, and, and a lot of people look at social media differently. You know, uh, how fast does somebody respond to a text you send? How fast do you expect them to respond to a text you've sent? And, and what are you looking for or message that you've sent? And I'll tell you right now, my problem with text messaging, especially group text messaging, is a lot of times everybody doesn't get the same thing at the same time. My wife and I were sitting at the Atlanta airport. My daughter was returning from Italy. My daughter and wife were texting. We're all in the same plan. We all have iPhones. And I'm not getting any of the text. It's a group text to all three of us. But I'm not getting any of them. Why? I don't know. Or oftentimes in a group text you'll get someone so, so will say this, somebody will say this. You'll respond this, but then you get them out of sequence, and, and you get a no. And it's like, what do you mean, no? Well, no, I was talking to them, not to you. Oh, well, you know. So it it's complicates things, but a, a lot of times I've seen people um, in the middle of a, a, a conversation with their significant other, their phone will go ding, and they pick up their phone and look at it. Um, you know, it interferes with the, the, the dyad, the, the dialogue that the two people are having because all of a sudden this social media thing dinged in there and, and took precedence. Are, are you putting that on the side uh, while you were having an interpersonal conversation? Uh, we actively use communication to build a confirming climate. Think about that. If you were in a relationship, interpersonal relationship, does the person that you're in a relationship with and do you actively use communication to, to build a confirming climate? Or do you not actively use communication and it causes a disconfirming climate? Or how do you how do you deal with that? You know, we, we have to uh, understand what other people are going through and we have to use 
communication to show them that we understand. If you don't, you're not really in a relationship. We need to validate others, you know. Um, and, and we need to use communication to express things in a way that we're not blaming others, you know. Um, you make me so mad. No, that, that doesn't do much for the communication aspect of it. You're mad, but why are you mad? You know, or I'm mad, but why am I mad? Well, it's not that you make me mad. It's just I get mad when you do this. You know, we're having a conversation and your phone dings and you pick it up. It, it upsets me. It makes me mad. It feel, makes me feel like I don't, I don't matter. You know, we need to validate others' feelings. Well, I, I didn't know that, that it was bothering you. I'll, I'll put my phone down. You have to understand that. You have to affirm yourself. Don't be a doormat with somebody else. You know, if something is bothering you, you need to let them know it bothers you. But don't just say that they make you mad because, see, that, that's a, a them thing. You know, I get mad when you. Make sure that you use that. Respect diversity and different standpoints. Different standpoints is very often a good thing. You know, I've, I've had the the wonderful pleasure and opportunity to travel the world. And I have seen all kinds of things. And I understand the world better because I understand the diversity. I, I enjoy having um, religious conversations with people from different backgrounds. Um, Mormons and Buddhists and, and Hindu and Catholics. And, 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 you know, I was raised a Southern Baptist, but even different Baptists have different perspectives. You know, I love getting the information from other people so I can better understand how they see the world. Um, diversity in, in today's climate. You know, I watch CNN and I watch Fox News because I want to understand both sides of a topic. And, and I don't want to live in a silo and this is what I believe. I want to understand what the other person has to say. So I can have great interpersonal conversations with people that have different political beliefs than I believe because I want to understand them and, and understand the, and their diversity allows me to understand the situation better. Uh, respond constructively. <clears throat> That's something that we often don't do in a, in a relationship and it causes conflict in the relationship. So instead of saying, yeah, if you want to, you know, if my wife ever says, eh, if you want to, I don't care, do what you want to do, I know that there's a problem because she doesn't say that if she really means it. If she really means it, she's going to say something more constructively. That's a great idea. Yeah, go ahead and do it. You know, but if it bothers her, a lot of times she will still be, yeah, if you want to, go ahead. And to me, that's a red flag going up. You know, she's not responding constructively. She just saying, yeah, if you want to. If she really doesn't want me to, then she should say, no, don't do that. Um, it's a constructive because of this. You know, don't just say, don't do that. Well, you know, I'd rather you not do that because um, I'm all the time go around with, I'm blind, you know that. I go around with my cane, you know, and, and, and she'll, you know, I'm going to go in the store. And you, you need me to go in with you? No, I'm okay. <laughs> you know? But I know it's because she worries about me that, that she says things like that. You know, she, she wants to make sure that I'm safe. So I want to, in this current pandemic, I want to make sure that she's safe and she has COPD and, and I don't want her out exposed to stuff. So, you know, we respond constructively. This is, you know, you can go by yourself, but I'd rather, or be careful, you know, because I'm worried about you. So communication in the interpersonal relationship is about climate. It really is. You know, are, are you creating the storms that cause the problem? You know, are, or are you the, the ray of sunshine that, 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 that helps? And, and you have to look at that. Is your, your significant other, are they always gloomy? Are they always creating downpours and storms? And if they are, then, then you need to work on that, or they need to work on that. So, validate one another and, and work together 
to, to bring that climate to a better place. If you can't do that, then you need to, to reevaluate the, the relationship because you should not be in a, a, an unhealthy interpersonal relationship. So that is chapter eight. Uh, I hope that it's been beneficial. I hope you still read the chapter. Make sure that you contact me if you need me. You have my email. You have my phone number. Uh, I'll do what I can to help you. Mm, go online. Make a comment to my post. And comment on two of your peers. And next week we'll be doing Chapter 9. I'm looking forward to um, making another video. I'd look a whole lot more forward to seeing y'all in person. But we do what we have to do. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.